What I'm presenting here, only in a, a minor part on, on ideas. The whole thing has been invented by chemists with great ideas, great scientists, and I will put only very few names in my slides. But I already had to put a whole list of scientists developing coupled cluster. I have a high respect for this community, so anonymously, I want to, to acknowledge all this, uh, this co commu uh, community uh, for developing the, <coughs> the, the couple cluster method. Okay, and here is an overview. I uh, just, just start with a little motivation, and I'm modifying a little bit the perspective of couple cluster. Uh, I will talk about couple cluster, uh, TSECD, and, uh, and I, I will focus on first on a complete active space multi-reference couple cluster. Yeah? And then we, I would like to extend this a little bit. And the key, uh, the, the key principle we are using is a bivariational formulation, which has in couple cluster three really already introduced by Aponen they 40 years ago. And uh, I will end with some conclusion. I will not bother you with theoretical results, only uh, I, I would like to mention it uh, because the uh, analytical theoretical results, that's more or less my, uh, uh, my agenda. That's what I'm interested in. Okay, so start with the motivation here. I will talk about wave function methods. So we really want to approximate the wave function solution of the electronic Schrodinger equation. Yeah? And uh, uh, um, so usually this, the, the wave function can be approximated in, in a, a, a CI fashion on a linear space, but it appears often that it is much better to have nonlinear parameterization of the wave function. And uh, uh, I'm interested in two kinds of nonlinear parameterization. Uh, one is our tensor networks, uh, matrix product states, yeah? And, uh, but I will not really talk about it. And the other is a nonlinear parameterization introduced in the couple cluster method uh, by this uh, a exponential parameterization. And indeed, this e, e to the t, I will explain it uh, more precisely later, is not so highly uh, nonlinear. Yeah? You see that e, uh, 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 e to uh, the, um, <coughs> the exponential of an operator is a solution, is a solution of a linear ODE. Yeah? X dot is the operator, yeah? Okay, at a, cert a certain time t, so it's not so, yeah. Okay, but the, the ansatz here, the, the couple cluster ansatz has a, quite a restriction that this is applied to a single determinant, a reference determinant. Usually that's a Hartree-Fock determinant. And the idea is, the basic idea of a multi-couple cluster uh, ansatz is not using a single determinant, using uh, 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 using now uh, um, a bunch of functions which are of this form with different uh, 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 determinants. Yeah? And this leads to principal difficulties. Yeah? But at first I make the following. It must not be the reference. It must not be a determinant. It can be already a linear combination of slated determinants. Yeah? So I'm focusing here on a small subspace, I call it the complete active space here, HCAS. Yeah? So HCAS is a small or possibly not too large uh, subspace, and it is spanned by the corresponding Slater determinants. And uh, couple cluster methods is, is well known for its accuracy, but it's already well known that there are many situations where the original single reference couple cluster method fails. So it is good for computing high accuracy uh, for, um, for weak correlation, but in strong correlation case, it, it, it fails. That, that's roughly what the people are, are talking about. And uh, uh, that's the reason that this, uh, that this, uh, this situation is a multi-reference situation, yeah? but there's no precise definition. Yeah? And really to consider a, 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 a typical multi-reference situation, I am considering the computation of the first n 
eigenstates, n not too large, let's say 5 or something like this. Yeah? So you see, you have not to compute a single function. You have to compute a, a, a set of functions. And typically, uh, you would expect that it's, it's at a single reference is not a good choice. OK. Yeah. The other thing is uh, a motivation for the coupled cluster method. And this looks a little bit a strange motivation. But Lin Lin asked me, can this be explained by an embedding method? So indeed, uh, uh, I want to replace the linear Schrodinger operator on the configuration space by a model operator on a much smaller space, namely here the H cus, a suitable small subspace. Yeah, but uh, I do not want only to project the operator to the subspace because I'm losing a lot of information what is outside the subspace. I want to incorporate this observation what is outside the subspace by finding a transformation, by finding a transformation from the configuration space in itself. And then uh, uh, I uh, introduce the composition of this transformation, the Hamilton operator and the inverse transformation. Yeah? And this is now restricted to the subspace. Yeah? Yeah, so this is more or less, this, this, this phi incorporates uh, what we call a bath or something like this. An example for a single reference subspace is a single reference subspace. So psi is a wave function is approximated by, or given by, uh, the exponential of an excitation operator applied to the reference from my subspace. Yeah? In single reference, the subspace is just one dimensional, namely the span of the reference, usually the Hartree-Fock determinant. OK. Yeah? And then I, and this e to the power t is a transformation phi. And I tell the inverse is e to the power minus e. And it turns out in the Campbell cluster uh, business that the, this transformation gives you an, an Hamilton operator h bar, gives you an Hamilton operator h bar in such a way that the Hartree Fock, the uh, reference determinant, is the exact ground state. Yeah? So the transformed operator has a well-known ground state, namely the reference determinant or member of the subspace, and it has the approximated couple cluster energy. Yeah? Yeah? So this, this operator is much more complicated and seems to be hard to find, but it, it simplifies the problem. This is already be the, the, the beginning of, uh, and you see that this operator here is no longer symmetric. Yeah, so we have to really work in a non-unitary fashion. We have to leave uh, the uh, case of uh, the situation of Hermitian the operator. This is, is non-Hermitian. This is non-symmetric. We have to deal with it. But uh, it's a model. It's a more complicated operator. And it has a very simple wave uh, solution. And then if you have computed the subspace, the simplest method of computing excited states is use this transformed, uh, similarity transformed Hamiltonian and compute the eigenvalues and the eigenstates. But since it is not symmetric, they are left and right eigenstates. Yeah? Okay, this, yeah. this is called the equation of motion. And that's, and, uh, uh, th that's, that's a well-known method. And I will not talk about it. That's the first idea. Yeah? But this uh, uh, equation of motion is not a good method. Even it is, it is not size continuous, uh, size consistent. There is an extension in, with the Helga Kalini response theory, which gives you better, better results. But even this is not really satisfactory. OK? I want to go beyond this, and I, want, I do not want to talk about equation of motion. So now, uh, what we now tried, or what you have in, in mind, is uh, something which, OK, let us see. So, in, so we want to compute not a single function. We want to compute the first, a, a set of functions, particularly the first eigenstates. And before we formulate this in the sense of the Monkos formulation, that we consider the set of projection, of projection operators, so they are, they are idempotent, and their trace is exactly the number of, of functions I want. Yeah? OK, but uh, this must not be, uh, this must not be uh, 
symmetric, so these are not orthogonal. I consider oblique projection. We consider oblique projection here, and it is known that this yet uh, uh, an oblique projection can be characterized by two sets of function. One set of function is the basis of the image. That's the phi i tilde, and the other set of function is the basis uh, of the uh, 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 joint of the pn. Yeah? It's the image of the uh, joint. Yeah, so uh, then the projection can be written. Then the projection can be written. Uh, okay, and these functions, sorry, then these functions, these they, they are coupled in the following tense. They should be biorthogonal. So biorthogonality is replaced by by biorthogonality. Yeah, and we have now to deal with two with the left and and right with two sets of function. That that that's. That's the further idea. Yeah? And the next thing is, we consider the following functional. We are looking now for operators, such that the trace of the Hamiltonian, so the trace of the Hamiltonian is minimized. That's the standard way you do the, you make density functional theory or, or, uh, or a, a Hartree-Fock. Yeah? So the, you want to minimize this function, and it turns out that the stationary points, that's the stationary points uh, for, of this functional, of the, depending on p, uh, are equivalent to two, to, to two equations, namely that, uh, the, uh, uh, that, that p and i minus p are invariant subspaces of H. Yeah, these equations, it's well known more or less, you say p is commuting with H. Yeah? Yeah, that's a well known. And in couple cluster theory, they are called Bloch equation. Instead of a single Bloch equation in this ansatz, in this bioorthogonal ansatz, you have two Bloch equations. OK. Yeah. So this is the starting point of the state universal multi-reference coupled cluster. Yeah. We, we, we want to start it, and we want to, to uh, 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 under some restrictions, we want really to find out how, find, uh, how far it works. Yeah? But instead of the usual multi-reference couple cluster theory, we follow immediately the lines of the bivariational uh, uh, principle. Yeah? That's OK. Now let me just uh, be more precise. Let me just give you, uh, uh, give you just a short introduction into signal reference couple cluster theory. And then uh, the state-specific multi-reference couple cluster method. So, uh, we are, so we have we are considering a basis set. We are considering a basis set of all the normal bases. Yeah, up to say uh, uh, up to say a, a, a fixed number. Yeah, and let me introduce here. Usually, you know what annihilation and creation operators are. But here you can, on, on Slater determinants, you can define this annihilation and creation operator that if you have a Slater determinants with n plus 1 uh, 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 orbital uh, uh, basis functions in the determinant, and H a applied to this uh, Slater determinant give you one which has one orbital less, and you just remove the orbital j. If the orbital is not apparent in the Slater determinant, then you define this d4 d by 0. OK. And the adjoint operator is just the adjoint operator. If you have a basis, say, say phi b, yeah, and, then you, uh, uh, and then you are inserting, then you are adding to your, uh, to your uh, uh, orbital function this new orbital function phi b. Yeah? You should be a little bit careful about the sign and so on. OK. Yeah? And, in, and then in this sense, then it is well known that uh, 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 the Schrodinger operator, electronic Schrodinger operator, can be really written as a linear combination of products of, of such operators. Yeah, and uh, the first part, the first part is, is, is a single particle operator called single particle operator here. That's you, and uh, the second part is the uh, uh, two particle operator. Yeah, practically, practically, this decomposition is not unit. Practically, these f's here are the uh, practically these f's are the one electron integrals, and the other are the uh, two electron integrals. But I transform it into the form 
that these are the elements of the Fock operator, and this is a, a fluctuation potential. Yeah? OK, so we have a sum of single particle operators. and uh, OK, that's, that's the starting point. And now comes the, the couple cluster method, and even the CI method. And, uh, and now you, 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 you define an excitation operator of the following kind. I call it x here, or, or the index here is 1, and the index is below. And it does the following. It removes the first orbital here. If this is a reference determinant given by phi 1 until phi capital N, I remove the first orbital here, and re I replace it by the case uh, orbital basis function, OK? Yeah? So and uh, a, a k can be greater, usually k k can be greater than n. Uh, that's, that's what, uh, that's typically, that's excitation is what a football trainer, what a trainer does, he puts some player out of the game and put a new player in, okay? Yeah. And now it, and now we ha are introducing the following rule. The first, the first capital N basis function orbitals, we call occupied orbitals, they are in blue, and the other, and the other orbitals, here are in red, we call unoccupied. And we, yeah. This P? Uh, you see, I use the index, I use the index uh, L, K, and L only for the occupied, the L only for the occupied ones, what and the. P? Minus one to the minus P. Ah, uh, that, that, uh, 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 that is the number of, of uh, permutations you need to put it on the, on the correct position, yeah? That's it's. OK. Uh, I explain everything up to the sign of the basis function. Yeah, OK, that's, uh, but it's, that, that's sufficient to understand it. Yeah? So then, and you see that you just you have this pair. Yeah? And there's a, there's a rule for a couple cluster. And there's a, there's a rule, you sh and I recommend never violate this rule. Yeah? You should annihilate only, only the blue ones, only the occupied ones. And you should excite only the red ones, OK? And if you follow this rule, and then these operators, these excitation operators, they are commuting. Yeah? They make the business and the computation much simpler. OK, and now uh, is the I solution. Now the I solution can be given by just starting with the, 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 the reference and adding now linear combination of new Slater determinants. And the new Slater determinants can be written as the uh, excitation, excitation mu, it can be multi-index applied to the uh, psi zero. Yeah? And you see this is parameterized in a linear way here, uh, uh, depending on the uh, CI amplitude C mu. Yeah? OK, in the sequel, we will always use the intermediate normalization that we are uh, uh, always assuming that our wave function we want to compute is not orthogonal to the, re to the uh, uh, reference determinant, yeah? OK? Yeah, otherwise, we are dead. And we use this intermediate normalization, which is already used in MP2, yeah? OK. And now we go a little bit, a little step further. Yeah? When we want to do, when we want to do multi-reference couple cluster, then we are in problem. Then we are uh, in, in, in bad shape. Because we, if we have these rules, and then the, the reference here is fixed, the blues are fixed, and you, I say you should not violate it. Yeah? But now, in the, in the, uh, now we want to do this, make the following. Let us consider a finite basis set with capital K basis functions, here called psi. Yeah? The first one, 1 to n, they are occupied, and then and then we will add to this, to this uh, uh, fun only few basis functions. We call active basis functions. And we generate a full ZI space by this first, and we call it complete active space. That's only, that's only a small or relatively small subspace of the subspace generated by all basis functions. I simplify. You can already in the comp. You can already use here. You can already uh, 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 frozen some uh, uh, fix some basis function here. So you can already de divide this into active occupied one and yeah. 
So uh, here, I, for simplicity of presentation, I make them all, all active. So this basis function, this basis, this basis set here is a basis for defining the CAS uh, full CI space. It's a smaller space, yeah, okay? And these are the external ones, yeah, okay. And now we do, again, we use this rule. We, we, in, we do annihilate only occupied ones and we excite in the external excitation, we excite external ones or cast ones. Yeah? Let us look a little bit further. Okay. Yeah? Now forget first, to get, come back to the single reference couple cluster. We have the normalization. And with this uh, linear ansatz, with this linear ansatz, it's a linear combination of basis functions, we get the CI method. If we use a full CI space, we get the full CI. Uh, a method that, that's, that's uh, linear and it's a classical Galakian ansatz. Now comes a couple cluster ansatz. And now the, it's a couple cluster ansatz that even you can view this as S nu times the excitation operator X nu applied to the reference phi zero. Yeah, okay? But that's just the linear part, that's the linear part of an exponential parameterization. Linear part of an exponential parameterization, you see, okay, uh, we define the wave function as uh, a exponential of this operator. It's a linear combination of excitation operators applied to the reference determinant. Yeah? That's or to the reference. We have to be careful. And then it's, it's clear to Z, and I put it in the weak formulation, that if psi is, uh, is an eigenvalue, psi is an eigenvalue, then, we, then this relation holds for all excitations nu. Okay, that this is uh, this. If you run over all excitation, you run over all Slater determinants. You test it. This you you test H applied to this new wave function uh, with this one. And it is already clear that uh, the uh, exponential of this never goes beyond the full ZI space. Yeah. Uh, okay. But in this formulation now, in this formulation now we can really uh, introduce an approximation by saying, okay, uh, so instead of using all possible excitations, we use only a few of them, say single and double excitations typically. Yeah? And then we are restricting the testing also only to single and double excited states. Yeah? Okay, that's, this gives you an equation determining or com for com uh, computing the unknown excitation uh, T or the amplitude called the unknown amplitudes T mu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here, is, here now comes an alternative ansatz. An alternative ansatz is that uh, I instead of uh, applying uh, H uh, to the uh, E to the T psi mu to the wave function, we multiply it from the left with the inverse of this exponential transform, with the e to the minus t. And it's quite easy to see that this and the full ZI space is equivalent, gives you the same expression. Now comes something which is very elegant and uh, makes a couple cluster methods really working. The exponential, you, you can write the exponential of t uh, by a, a, a Taylor series. Yeah? And even it's so, okay. But now we, this, this expression can already be expanded by the baker campbell hausdorff formula. And here, here comes an important observation. This expansion terminates after the, after the fourth commutator. This is finite. And the reason is, the reason is that the Hamilton operator contains at most three part, uh, two particle operators. For three particle operators, the expansion terminates again, but a little bit later, after the six months. Okay, so this makes the whole thing completely computable. Okay, and, uh, and uh, for restricted ansatz, we can use this also for restricted ansatz, then this is more or less a fourth order polynomial in the parameter T. It's a nonlinear equation in T. But it can be solved iteratively. If it is solvable and so on, 
That's a delicate question, but it's an interesting question. I'm really interested in it. Another thing which, is, which is, has been well known, has been well known but uh, um, okay, here it's, 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 uh, it's a rigorous proof. For the full coupled cluster, the full coupled cluster, if you use all the, the complete ansatz, yeah, then the full coupled cluster is equivalent to the full ZI. You get the exact wave function. Yeah? Okay? That's, that, it, okay, it's, it's, it's well known, but, uh, uh, yeah, okay. But uh, 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 for the restricted ansatz, you get different things. Okay, and now I come to the, uh, to the uh, uh, space-specific multi-reference. And I have, to, I have to tell you that you should distinguish between a reference in this and the reference determinant, yeah? So we have two references, yeah? And we will fix the reference determinant all the time because we want to follow this rule. We never touch it. Yeah, but we will introduce a new reference here. And here this, this is for the full, for the full coupled cluster. Then the exact wave from the full coupled cluster can be written as a, a, a sum of, of uh, excitation operators applied to the reference determinant. And among these, these excitations are the exciting excitations which goes only into the cusp space. Here, these are the red ones plus the blue ones, okay, and if you apply the, and these are uh, really commutative, so this is exponential to the tx times exponential to the et cus, uh, et cus to zero is a function in the cus space. Yeah? Okay, and now we are called this a reference, yeah? and the cus space can be not too small or even not too large. Yeah, that, that's the cusp space here and the exterior. And how does this exterior excitations look like? So they, contain, they contain exterior excitations or they can then indices from the uh, uh, um, uh, 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 exterior. So not, not cusp one, but at least one. So you already have the mixed, the mixed situation where you have here, uh, where you have uh, an excitation with a cus one and an excitation with the exterior one. So at least one exterior. All these uh, excitations, also if you apply this to the reference determinant, you get Slater determinants, which are all orthogonal to the cusp space. Okay? And here I rewrite now here the uh, decomposition. And I already do make the following. So the excitations, I group the excitations into Single excitation, double excitation, T1, double excitations, and so on. And for this exterior one later, I often uh, assume that T, T1 is zero, or put it zero. Yeah? In general, that's not the case for the T cus. Yeah? Yeah? That is, okay. Yeah, so you see, and now we have, you have here a reference determinant for defining everything. But here you know you have a reference state in psi cus, yeah? And uh, this gives you a possibility really to deal with uh, different references and so on, yeah? The only assumption is that the reference is a, a function, it's a linear combination and all the Slater determinants are in H cus. Okay, and now comes it's a state-specific coupled cluster. We used, we used now uh, the, uh, the exponential transformation only with the exterior excitations. Yeah, that, that's, that's the same as in the single reference, but here we restrict only to the exterior excitations, but we apply this to the full H cusp space, so the full complete active space. And here we have the projection. So we project this operator. This is a, a non-symmetric operator. We project this to the, to the cusp space. OK. And then <clears throat> we have two equations. One is that the transformed operator, that's phi cus, should be a, 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 an, an eigenfunction of the transformed operator to the correct or to the coupled cluster energy. OK? So, and a right eigenfunction because this is, is non-symmetric. 
So we have this. So phi cos is an eigenfunction to be, to, to, uh, we have to compute, but this operator depends on the ampli exterior amplitudes t. Uh, and now do we, we add, we already have an equation, we already have an equation for the, uh, for the uh, amplitudes, namely exactly the equation I have to show you. If you, if you test this transformed application to phi cos here, that is, yeah, uh, with ex exciting only in the exterior, yeah, the, the same uh, as the indices as for the amplitudes here, yeah, then this should be zero, except mu is, is zero, which is not, not in this set, yeah. So these are, a, a, if you have n parameters in the, uh, in the uh, 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 n amplitudes, then this is a set of n equations for n amplitudes, okay? Nonlinear. And you have to satisfy both. How to do this practically? You, you start with t equals zero, that's just the projection of the Hamilton operator to the cusp space. You get a first an, a clue for an eigenvalue, uh, for an, uh, an eigenfunction, you put it into the couple cluster equation, you get the exterior uh, 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 a couple cluster amplitudes, yeah? And if you do, and you, if you then stop your computation using the exterior, that's just tailored couple cluster, yeah? And that's even a, 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 a good approach. But then you can already, if you have this, you can already self-consistently iterate. You, you put now this, you compute this operator, you, you solve this equation, and so on. And you, you see that this operator does exactly the job. Yeah? It works on a smaller space, it works on a smaller space, and the function, the eigenfunction, the small space, yeah? Yeah? Is the, is the eigenfunction corresponds to the, to the exact eigenfunction, and this gives you the uh, correct energy, okay? Now comes the state universal, but uh, uh, I will come to this slide later. So your ansatz here, your ansatz is that your wave function is the ex exponential excitation applied to a function in the cusp space. I call this now reference. Yeah? That's here, or this, this reference really is a multi-reference. Yeah? Yeah? Okay? And uh, a, a dual function is the inverse of this, Apply to another, to a dual solution, yeah? But now it turns out that uh, a little bit later that we can modify this, we can modify this, so we use this ansatz, yeah? And we impose, and then we impose that these functions are biorthogonal. And then you see that with this ansatz, you end up with approximation of the eigenfunctions which are non-orthogonal, okay? The exact eigenfunctions are orthogonal, so approximation must not be. So the lack of orthogonality can give you a monitoring of the error you are doing. Yeah? Okay, uh, I come to this later. Now I come to the bivariational principle. And the bivariational principle says, okay, we want to compute, we want to compute the expectation value of the operator. Yeah? Now the expectation value is obtained if you normalize your wave function to one. Yeah, this is, re and now you have not only one wave function, you have the primal and the dual. This is just uh, uh, introduced by this factor here. Usually you suppose, is there only one function, you suppose that this part is equal to one. Okay? And then you have a functional which depends on two, uh, on, 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 on two functions, phi tilde and phi. Yeah? And then we say, okay, we want to optimize this function. It is not a, a minimization, it's a settled point problem. Yeah? Subordinate it to a constraint. And the constraint are the couple cluster equation. The constraints are the couple cluster equation. Yeah? Helgaka was, in, I think, it's the first who had this, this idea. Yeah? Okay, so we are introducing the following Lagrangian. Yeah? And then the couple cluster method becomes variational in a certain sense, because now we can really de derive the working equations, we can really derive the working equations by looking for the, by looking for the stationary point of this Lagrangian. But with this Lagrangian, we get new variables, namely this lambda, this capital lambda, 
and this adjoins this tilde phi. And let us look how this looks like. Exactly, if you differentiate with respect to psi tilde, yeah, then you get the eigenvalue problem on the cusp space. That is just the, the eigenvalue problem on the cusp space. And here, that's the similarity transformed h cus is this operator here. Now, this, what, is f, what is f of t? f of t is just this expression, yeah, only in shorthand notation. So you have this expression, and these are just the amplitudes, the couple cluster equation. This should be zero for all mu x. Yeah? And you see this here depends nonlinearly on t. So this is just exactly the working equations I have shown you. But in addition, you obtain more equations. Namely, you, if you differentiate with respect to the, to the uh, primal phi, yeah, you get an adjoint equation here. But this is not a left eigenvalue problem. It contains, it contains an immunohomogeneity. OK? I can put on this later. Yeah? So that's, that's the, uh, uh, quite different to the uh, uh, equation of motion method. And how to compute lambda, how to com uh, 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 so, so the, uh, it's a couple cluster equation give if you differentiate the constraint with respect to the Lagrange multiplier. How to compute the Lagrange multiplier? Does the Lagrange multiplier appears here in linearly? So you differentiate with respect to t, and you get uh, a linear equation. Here you get f prime, and you get a linear equation. You get a linear equation for the lambda. That's not easy. Yeah. And you have to solve it. Yeah. Usually it contains. The, uh, uh, the, the derivative of f, often called the uh, couple cluster gradient or couple cluster s, please. Could you remind us of the difference between h bar cas and the, the similarity transformed uh, matrix in the same uh, So I, I, x, x cas hat is a similarity transformed. The same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's only here. Uh, sometimes I have, uh, uh, OK, and here, here it's not, not so easy to see, but that's just x bar hat. Yeah? You need to solve for the key in key. You need to solve it. You see, you see the, these, you can solve both equations. You have to solve it iteratively without computing lambda and without computing phi tilde. But if you have solved it, then you can, can solve the equation for lambda. And if you have the equation for lambda, then you can solve the equation for the tilde. And when phi is the DMRG, you first the BCH uh, H to obtain the H bar cas, and then you contract. What, what do you mean? So when phi uh, cas is yeah. represented by DMRG, yeah. do you first use BCA to obtain H bar cas and then contract? Yeah, that, 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 that's an interesting point. So Siemens suggests that we are using two, that we are using two, uh, uh, a, a, two matrix product states, namely phi and phi tilde. Yeah? Dual to each other. Yeah? So you have to project this onto the tension space of this. Yeah? That's it. I, I, I dropped this remark. But if you want to do this with DMRG, yeah, I will talk a little bit later, you should be careful. Yeah? OK? Yeah? So you have to project on the tension space of psi tilde. Yeah? Then you have to do this in this iteration, then you have to do this uh, simultaneously. OK, and now I come to the uh, motivation for this uh, a, a multiple, uh, uh, or this uh, uh, many eigenstates, many eigenstates. So uh, if you want to consider the first eigenstates, and the same, the, the same works if the eigenstate is degenerate. That's also a reason why I want to, uh, to, uh, uh, to look at this case. Then we are computing a set of function. In initially, initially, these must not be eigenfunctions. These must not be eigenfunctions, but we have eigenfunctions in mind. This, OK, here is a, here, sorry, here is a mistake. A little bit here, this is psi i tilde. We want to have pi orthogonality, psi i tilde. I thought I had corrected it. Yeah, OK. Uh, ah, here, here it's, it's corrected. And here is the same slide. And here, OK, here says psi i tilde. Sorry for this. And uh, the psi, the wave function, is just the exponential transform applied to the cusp function. OK? And the psi tilde is just the inverse of the exponential applied to the cusp function phi tilde. 
but and now it turns out that if you look to the uh, uh, to the Lagrangian, you can add this additional term. You can add this additional term, and this does in the stationary point, and this does not change the energy. Yeah. So this this formulation of the dual function is a, is a good formulation. Yeah. And here you have to introduce new de new degrees of freedom of the time. The other point is. This operator is great. This improves your reference dramatically. This operator, if you apply this to the cusp space, the joint, it's just the identity. Yeah? You, can for, for, yeah, okay, you can forget it. So the, 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 this operator is of minor importance. This, this is great. Yeah? Okay. And now if you want really to focus on the concept that we have this biosorgonality here, yeah, you insert it, and you see, we make the following. So for different eigenstates, for different eigenstates, we use different references. They are not determinants. They are functions in the cusp space, yeah? OK? Yeah? And different exponential transforms, yeah? Not exactly, yeah. One may ask, can we use the same exponential transform for all these? It's not clear. At least this ansatz is more has more uh, freedom and it would be more precise. Okay, but now we are looking to the biosorgonality, and you see if you incorporate this ansatz here, then these uh, uh, these functions in the cusp space phi and phi tilde, they are no longer biosorgonal. You have this additional term, and this additional term vanishes only if the excitations are the same for all i. Okay, and this. OK, and then we can really introduce the Lagrangian. OK, I have here to say something. That, that's a formulation of the Rolle quotient. Yeah, and uh, you can already uh, put it into a simple Lagrangian by introducing an additional Lagrange multiplier, saying that this product, that this uh, inner product should be equal to 1. This should be normalized to 1. And then there is an additional Lagrange multiplier, and then it turns out that the Lagrange multiplier is exactly the energy. Yeah? Who is familiar with the TFT computation and so on? That's not strange, that's not surprising. Yeah? Okay? And here we do the same, but here now we have a bench of functions, so, we, so our Lagrange multiplier in general is a matrix. And if this matrix and this formulation is the solution is not unique, if the matrix is diagonal, then it contains exactly the energies. Yeah? Okay, but we make at first the, 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 the formal ansatz. Yeah? Okay, with this Lagrangian, that's a lot of them, and then we obtain a bunch of coupled equations, a bunch of coupled equations, and it looks like that this is not computable because here I. It's not equal to J here. But if you apply this, but this delta J is in the weak formulation, yeah, just for all cusp spaces, if you uh, put it to the pra, and then you see you, you end up with another function in the, in the uh, uh, cusp space. So uh, you, uh, you can really here replace CI by J. Yeah? Otherwise, you don't have baker kempeler yeah. So it's, it's, it's computable. The first we have it's already computable. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it looks like uncomputable, but it's computable, but it's a bunch of coupled equations. Yeah, and that's hard to solve, and we gave up. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, no, no, okay. But there's a question, can it be decoupled? So at first we are intended only to compute a, a basis set. Yeah, a set of basis functions, thought it might be easier. But you say, OK, no. Uh, uh, the, let us consider exactly the eigenfunctions. Let us consider the case where the uh, uh, Lagrange multiplier is diagonal. Does this work? Does this have a solution? And then it turns out, then it turns out that here we, we make this definition, and this is a, a, a corresponding uh, energy ij. So this, this is a. Uh, um, corresponding uh, eigenvalue, and then we obtain the equation that for the similarity transformed uh, a, 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 this is an, I, an, an e, I, ij is an eigenvalue for the right eigen solution phi j. Yeah? 
Okay, it's capital phi j, yeah, sorry. And then we already have the couple cluster equations. They are completely decoupled. And already the equations for lambda, these are linear in, in, in lambda, the equations for lambda can be written down. One have to differentiate with respect to t, so we have right hand side, which depends only on the chase component, yeah, and it not computed here. But what's happening? How to compute the dual ones? And that's and then th this is a little bit tricky. And so we have computed the phi j. So suspend, we have computed the phi j. And then let us in and then in the cusp space, and then let us introduce the span of this of this phi j and the orthogonal entity composed the cusp space into this space S and its orthogonal complement W. So we can decompose every cusp function in the component which is here in S and in the complement. Okay. And then uh, um, and then we are looking, can we now compute this phi j prime and the xi j? Let us first suppose that we have the phi j available, prime available, and then we insert it here in this, uh, in, this, uh, 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 in this form, we do the differentiation, and then we obtain that, uh, and then we obtain in the weak form, and then we obtain in the weak form, an, uh, an eigenvalue problem, a left eigenvalue problem, not eigenvalue, uh, a left operator, hj bar minus ej transpose. This operator, since aj is not is singular yeah, on the cusp space. But we test it only, we test it only in the space w, and we consider only the illusions in w. Then on, on the cusp space it is singular, but on w it is invertible. Okay? And we see already that the right hand side is in w. Okay? Yeah? So if phi j is given, if phi j is given, if phi j is given, then this is a, a solvable equation. Yeah? Okay. And uh, the, the next point is how we can compute phi j prime. And now we look into the de definition or into our biorthogonality, and it turns out that we have this, we have, we have, we have this, uh, this condition because psi j, here we have phi j tilde, is psi j plus phi j prime. Psi j is perpendicular to phi j. Yeah, so it, it vanishes here. And now we can de de decompose it. And then you see that this is the identity matrix. This is a rank, this is a rank one matrix. Yeah? And this is just an unknown matrix for the unknown uh, coefficients for the unknown coefficients, I call this C, and this is the overlap matrix of the phi's. They are no longer, not orthogonal. If they are orthogonal, then this is just identity. Yeah? Okay, this is the overlap matrix, and from this matrix, the matrix equations, I, here this is a matrix R, plus and the product of the unknown matrix M and the overlap matrix, and we can just invert M and we, we can compute C. Yeah? So anything is well defined. Yeah? Now we have to justify that we really get eigenfunctions, that we really get eigenfunctions, and that um, we really get a projection, projector, we really get a projector, or my, you might call it a density matrix yeah? of this form if we have defined our spaces in this. Yeah? Okay, that's some, it's, it's, it's a computation here are somehow a little bit tricky, you must be careful. Yeah? You see that here, you have here this expression, and k must not be equal to j. Yeah? But then you say, okay, you, you just introduced here minus tj plus the difference, and this is some ex exponential uh, applied, and then you apply this to, to the pra, which is a cas solution, and you get all, all uh, again, uh, not a cas solution, a cas function, you get again a cas function, then this means that uh, this, this, uh, and here remains the uh, ha bar applied to ej is ej. Yeah? And then we insert here this here. Yeah? And here you must be already quite careful. So we have to insert, and you have to insert the, the couple cluster equations, 
because this expression is always, uh, is, even if you have your different TK, yeah, you just re remove it to have here the same, so you have H A bar, and here you have, uh, and you have either the reference, the Hartree Fock determinant, or excited ones, and all excited ones are zero due to the couple cluster equation, and only the reference gives you the EJ. Yeah? And you can insert this, and it's okay. Yeah? It's a little bit tricky, I hope I make everything correct. Yeah? Okay. Now I come to the remarks about computational aspects. The first is not so important, it's about the energy. It's about the energy. Uh, I will go a little bit further. Uh, I remember the following, and now I am, since all these are decoupling, I suppress the index J. So for each eigenfunction, we have equations of this type, yeah? where you have TJ cos. Okay, and uh, this is an unlinked formulation where you have your, here your exponential ansatz, and then this is a wave function, then your exponential ansatz uh, should give you an eigenfunction of H in this sense that uh, if you project this to, the, to, to these excitations, it should be zero. And the linked ansatz is, is, is similar to here, but you only insert the uh, inverse of this transform, the exterior. Yeah? Only for the T exterior here, I uh, remove the exterior for simplicity. Yeah? And this gives you the linked couple cluster equation. These equations are only equivalent if, if this operator applied to the CI space generated by this f excitations here, yeah, this operator acting onto the CI space uh, as an invertible operator. Yeah? It does, it is, it is a joint is a de-excitation. It does not make the space larger. Yeah? Okay? Yeah? And it turns out that in this formulation, you should be careful, you don't obtain the same, yeah? uh, but you obtain that these are usually in couple cluster, all approaches, they are equivalent. But here you have to be careful, they are only equivalent, or they, if, if t is equal to one, then they are equivalent. Yeah? In the other cases, they can be different. Yeah? Okay, that's, a, that's the first thing. And now I come to the couple cluster equations. How does these equations look like? And it turns out psi is in the cusp space that already all, even the, uh, the, the baker campbell hausdorff exp uh, expression, but you do not make the campbell hausdorff you can use the Taylor expressions. And then you see on the left-hand side of the E minus T, only the linear term appears, I minus T2. And on the right-hand side, yeah, since you have to project it only to cusp functions here, on the right-hand side, can already truncate you can already truncate the, uh, uh, um, the uh, 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 power expansion of the exponential function, Taylor expansion, after the second order. Yeah? And it turns out that even the second order, a lot of exteriors T are not apparent here. Only the, these terms are apparent which are mixed. Yeah? These are the couple cluster equations, and they are not precisely more difficult than the usual couple cluster equation. So solving now this couple cluster equation in the single reference case, this multi-reference case, the solution of the couple cluster equation yeah, is not more expensive than in the usual single double couple cluster computation. That's surprisingly, yeah, that in, in all these other Monkos methods and so on, is much more, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. But here it's, it's a good, it's, it's uh, yeah, you, see, you don't have an additional cost, but you have an additional cost here. That's now the similarity transformed Hamiltonian. You can write down the baker campbell hausdorff expansion, but even you don't know, you see, you have to project on the cusp space. So even the appearing term, because these are on, only exterior uh, excitations, a lot of these terms are vanishing. And it turns out that here you get your original projection to the cusp space. You get this operator here, it appears only linearly here. And you get this, which contains a mixed term quadratically. Usually these, you, the, you, you can neglect these terms, they are too small. Yeah? But you see that now this operator here is not simply the Hamiltonian, it is, it, it is of, of this form, yeah? even if you know T, 
And it turns out that this operator here is, more, is of the form of a three-particle operator, no longer two-particle, yeah? which, and, and this term already, yeah? which means that this, you have to solve this on the, in, in a full ZI fashion on the cusp base. Yeah? It's a little bit more complicated than if you have only here the uh, 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 equation on the cusp base. Okay, and people who have introduced this method, so I, uh, Adam Abramovich and so on, and it's for the single, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, they have uh, assumed that the cusp base is very small. Yeah? So they have only uh, uh, four basis functions for the cusp base. Yeah? So they, 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 they can almost do it by hand. And in their examples, yeah, okay, fine, that I'm almost at the end. And their examples, they, are, they know how to choose the cusp base and so on. My recommendation, if you have now looking for excited states and so on, you should make the cusp base much larger. You can really deal with larger cusp base. Yeah? But then you have really, you, 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 have, you have to solve your full ZI problem. So, and then you need an efficient full ZI solver. And that's the reason why I am interested here. One possibility is to use DMRG, which is tensor networks, QZ DMRG, okay? That's, and can you give you example about Taylor cluster? But an alternative would be Monte Carlo full ZI, yeah? All these methods, Monte Carlo full ZI and, and DMRG, they are restricted to small or moderate size problems, yeah? and compared to usual couple cluster calculation. Yeah? So here you do, here you use this, this efficient full ZI solvers, the recent developments yeah, for, the, for the full ZI, for this, for this model problem. And then you can make your, your, uh, uh, your uh, model space smaller. So you get now the following kind, the following kind of, of, of uh, uh, universality or approximation. You keep only in the exterior, single and double, not more. Yeah? But to, get, to come to the, uh, to the, to the limit, you are, uh, you are increasing the size of the cusp space. Okay? Yeah? If, you, if your cusp space is a full space, you, you have the correct result. Okay? Yeah? That's Okay, okay. Simplification here for the computation is, and here it's a little bit uh, more simplified. You use, you, 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 you consider only, only this part, yeah, this uh, Hamiltonian uh, projected onto the cusp space, you, and you use the solution here, yeah, and then you compute if you have this, and then you compute the corresponding. Uh, uh, excitations, and from this you get the result. This is called tailored coupled cluster, or externally corrected coupled cluster, yeah? and uh, the, the, with combination with DMRG has been done by, uh, by this group here, uh, uh, mainly by Jerry Pittner and Ursley Geza. It has been uh, 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 implemented in Orca, yeah? and even they do, they sheeting a little bit, so they are neglecting this, and that's, and it turns out, so for example, here they create, they consider the chromium dimer. And it turns out that the accuracy, even if it's a, a relative moderate uh, a, a DMRG solution, the accuracy is almost the same accuracy as coupled cluster, single, double, triple, quadruple. That's a really very expensive, yeah, okay, yeah. So even for the ground state, you get uh, you get a, a quite a, quite a accuracy and yeah that's okay we have uh, already uh, uh, then worked a little bit further considering other situations and dissociations and so on but this is only tailored coupled cluster so usual in this with the DMG formulation the version I have presented here is not been has not been implemented so far we have theoretical results but it's also work in progress and now I am at the end yeah. So is this multi-reference coupled cluster, yeah? Avoids the problems of single reference coupled cluster, so it can really deal with strong correlation, yeah? Without compromising the elegance 
of the single reference couple cluster. Yeah? Yeah? It is much better, expected to be much better the, if you compare this to equation of motion. You can view couple cluster anyway as a perturbational approach to improve your solution. Yeah? It gives you, yeah? and, uh, so, and even the analysis, uh, analysis shows if the amplitudes, the exterior amplitudes are small, yeah? then you get uh, a, a uh, 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 and you get a really computable, solvable couple cluster equations, yeah? and anything can be computed as well. And the computational costs are mainly the computational costs of the full ZI. Okay, okay, anything is still biased by the reference determinant. Yeah, you get not away from this, but at a at a large extent with this with this uh, cast reference, uh, you are avoiding. Uh, traditional uh, difficulties with uh, couple cluster. Okay, I think at this point I stop. Yeah, and I am at the end. <laughs>